Welcome to Direct U.S. Immigration's channel, where you get direct access to our most up-to-date immigration and global mobility space. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm going to talk about the third preference employment-based green card for skilled, professional, and other workers who want to enter the U.S. permanently to work. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Matreya Brown and I am a U.S. immigration attorney based in Washington, D.C. I am also the principal attorney at Direct U.S. Immigration, where we work with clients in all 50 states and around the world. Before we start, click on the like and subscribe button to follow our immigration hub to get the latest immigration information that could be vital to your case. And also, be sure to stick around until the end to get a bonus tip about the EB-3 green card renewal. As you may know, employment-based immigrant visas allow foreign workers who have found an employer willing to hire them to come to the U.S. permanently and work. I understand how complex this process is for many of you. So today, we're here to discuss a visa preference category intended for skilled workers, uh, professionals, and other workers. In this video, we will talk about the EB-3 category for the employment-based green card for prospective immigrants who do not qualify for the EB-1 or EB-2 preference. Although the EB-3 requirements are less stringent, um, the backlog can be longer. EB-3 is the third preference of the U.S. employment-based immigrant visa. It is one of the five employment-based green card categories that permanently enable a foreign professional to live and work in the U.S. It is designed for three types of applicants, the skilled workers, professionals, and unskilled or other workers. You may qualify under the EB-3 category if you meet the requirements under one of the three categories. The United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, so USCIS, defines each of the three categories as follows. So skilled workers are workers with at least two years of experience in their area of expertise. Professional are workers who have higher degrees and require a professional license to work, and unskilled or other workers are workers who can handle jobs that qualified workers are not available to handle. Due to its relatively easy eligibility criteria, people who don't qualify for the EB-1 and EB-2 green card categories are able to leverage the EB-3 category to immigrate and secure employment in the U.S. The eligibility for the EB-3 category differs for each subcategory. For skilled workers, you must have at least two years of working or training experience. Relevant post-secondary school education may be considered as training. You must be working in a role for which qualified U.S. workers are unavailable. For professionals, you must be performing a role that no skilled worker in the U.S. is available for, you must have adequate job experience in your professional field, and you must have a U.S. college bachelor's degree or a foreign degree equivalent from any country. For unskilled or other workers, you must be performing a role that no worker in the U.S. is available for, and you must be able to perform non-seasonal and permanent unskilled labor. All three subcategories within the EB-3 preference require a labor certification and a full-time permanent job offer from a U.S. employer. So the U.S. Department of Labor must approve the labor certification uh, prior to the green card being approved. Just like most other employment-based processes, employers are the ones to file the EB-3 preference green card application. So in other words, you cannot self-petition your application. The application process involves three main steps, which include filing the PERM labor certification and conducting advertisements, submitting Form I-140, and submitting Form I-45 when a visa is available. That employer must undergo an extensive recruitment process and determine the prevailing wage for your position and the geographical area where you'll be working to obtain the PERM labor certification from the Department of Labor. Your employer must then submit form ETA 9089 to the Department of Labor to obtain an approved labor certification. The form shows that your employer is willing to employ you and that there is no U.S. worker willing and able to perform your role. Now, Form 9089 is available online on the Department of Labor website, uh, and it can be completed electronically, uh, and the, but the employer can also fill it out and submit this form via snail mail. 
Submitting Form ETA 9089 for labor certification requires no application fee. Uh, it generally at this time is taking about six to nine months to adjudicate unless an audit is elicited. And if that occurs, then we're looking at another, I would say seven to eight months. Um, so this means your employer needs to submit the form prior to the actual need of employment. If the application is approved, you will obtain a certified labor certification, and upon approval, you can move on to the next step. Form I-140 is known as the Immigrant Petition for Alien Workers. It is divided into various parts to capture necessary information about the employer and the beneficiary, uh, so the prospective employee. Now, your employer must provide information about itself to include uh, its name, FEIN, mailing address, and more. Your employer must also provide necessary information about you, the employee, uh, also known as the beneficiary. And this includes your name, your home country, and your date of birth. Form I-140 is submitted by mail, and after submission, you will receive a notice confirming that USCIS has received your application. Once the petition is received, that date will mark your priority date and you will need to wait and watch the monthly visa bulletin released by the Department of State to see if your priority date is current, meaning that it matches or passes the dates given in the most recent bulletin. Now, it is important to note that as of right now, most of the final action dates for the EB-3 green card are backlogged uh, for only a few months. Others are backlogged for several years. So if you are from China or India, definitely be prepared to wait a considerable amount of time before your priority date is current. And remember that the dates for the other workers group vary slightly from those uh, from the other two groups. As soon as your date is current, uh, you can file a form I-45 uh, in order to adjust your status if you are already in the US. And in this case, your status would automatically switch to a lawful permanent resident as soon as your form I-45 is approved. Now, if your employer, uh, you know, now with this I-140, uh, your employer may also submit Form I-907 if they want expedited processing. Form I-907, the Request for Premium Processing, is an optional service that enables petitioners to receive a decision on their petitions uh, within 15 days. The I-140 takes many months to process, so your employee may opt for this uh, so to ensure quicker adjudication. Form I-45, the Application to Register Permanent Residence or Just Status, is the form to apply for lawful permanent resident status or green card status if the prospective employee is inside the U.S. Forms I-140 and I-45 can be concurrently uh, filed depending on whether a visa number is available for the prospective employee. So these visa numbers are based on the employee's country of birth or chargeability country, and if the prospective employee is outside of the U.S., then the immigrant visa is processed through the embassy or consulate. So currently, the filing fee for Form I-140 is $700, uh, Form I-907 for premium processing is $2,500, and Form I-45 is, is $1,225. Other fees aside from the official application fees may also apply. So for example, you may pay for medical examinations and vaccinations at the I-485 stage. Uh, fees also may apply for translations or even a translator for your visa interview if you need one. Now, it is important to note that a lot of the employment-based green cards uh, do not require uh, interviews, so a lot of cases are approved without a interview. However, it is important to note that technically USCIS does have the discretion to bring you in for an interview. So the following documents are generally needed for your EB-3 green card application. So your passport, of course, that's valid for at least six months, two passport size photos uh, matching your US visa requirements, uh, filing of all application forms, birth certificate, labor cert from the U.S. Department of Labor, the employer, employer's job offer, academic qualification documents, tax uh, documents, and of course the employer's ability to pay documents. So, but you may also need to submit uh, some other case-specific documents. Also, uh, if any of your supporting documents are in other languages, you must translate them to English and certify them. So you can have a certified translator uh, do that for you. And the translated copies must be submitted along with the original copies. 
Now, if you are outside of the US, you will in fact need to go through consular processing instead. And this does involve going to a US consulate or embassy in your home country and participating in a one-on-one -on -one interview with a consular officer. Now, you will need to complete the DS-260 online, uh, the immigrant visa application, and you should print out both the confirmation page of the DS-260 and receipt of your payment um, and bring those with you to the interview along with your passport, um, so of course your form of ID, two passport style photos, um, your um, approval from uh, the Department of Labor, your appointment notification, as well as USCIS, your appointment notification letter, and any additional supporting documents for your green card. So the EB3 category takes a relatively long time to process. So depending on your country of origin, it can take between one and three years and sometimes even longer, such as over seven years. Um, so your visa application, uh, but your visa application will be denied if a US-based skilled professional or unskilled worker is available during the advertising and recruitment period. And if that occurs, the process will need to be restarted. As promised, here's some bonus information that you may not know about. So one of the biggest advantages of getting a green card is the fact that it has a very long validity period. When issued, your EB-3 based green card will be valid for 10 years. And remember, this is not like renewing a non-immigrant visa where you have to resubmit a new petition and essentially re-qualify for this visa. For a green card, you, for the green card renewal, you simply file an I-90 form uh, to request to renew your green card, uh, of course with the government fee at that time. Um, and this is also the process if your green card has been lost, stolen, damaged, or destroyed, and you need a replacement. I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe if this content or information helps you in any way. Comment below if you want me to talk about something in specific. And of course, share this resource widely because you never know who needs answers to these questions. Additionally, if you have any specific questions about this video as they pertain uh, to your unique circumstances, please feel free to schedule a consultation with us also at the link below. Um, and I will see you in the next video.